if you could go back and give your younger, so this is pre rock nation, Sarah, I'm, I want you to go to that person. If you could okay. go back and give advice to pre rock nation, Sarah, what would you say? What advice would you give to, to your younger self before starting out? Um, it sounds very cliche, but it's something very, uh, relevant to me even now I think I would tell my younger self to face my fears head on um I think that is why it's a decision I made last year just last year to do um I think at the time pre rock Nation Sarah I could find every excuse as to why I can't go out to New York why I can't do this why I can't move back from LA, why I, you know, can't be successful in the music industry. I don't know anyone. I've never done this before. I don't know anything. There's no music programs at my school. Like I could find any, trust me, any excuse to account for why I couldn't do what blank, whatever it was. Um, And I think I was like extremely consumed by what people thought of me. I think I was... I was not confident. I was not a confident person at all. People always told me I like read confidently, but it was like, what are you saying? Like, what are you seeing? <laughs> just like, I would be so confused. I'm like, I don't understand how that's your conclusion. Um, and I, and because I didn't have that confidence and that's like self-assured nature, um, I became very malleable to my environment and to the people around me. And and my validation didn't come from myself or from God or from things that I really cared about, but it came from my peers. And, you know, if you put your validation in the people that are around you, that that's just like, what is that? That's, that's sand. That is just like crumbling sand. That is not substantive at all. I don't even know if that's a word. Um, substantial. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so I would say myself to myself, I would face that to I should face my fears head on mm. because I think when fears become, um, when you get to the other side and you and you realize like it, there really wasn't that much to be scared of, and even if there was, you are a better person now on the other side of it, and you've learned more and you've taken something with you from that experience. You realize that. I mean, I think that's what I kind of, that kind of contributes to my confidence now is like being able to decide very decisively, this is something I'm scared of that is very intimidating um, and I'm going to do it because this looming cloud of fear doesn't serve me in any way. Mm. It doesn't serve the, the my story, the, the community that I'm a part of, the people that I care about. If I'm held back from this fear, um, it's not only taking away from myself, but from everything that I love. Um, And I think, yeah, that last year is kind of when I made that decision for myself because I was kind of fed up with just being restrained by things that, you know, I have a very overactive mind. I will think of every scenario. (laughs) I will, you know, think of anything that could go wrong. And I've been intentional about trying to like change that thought pattern, but it started with, this scares you do it Mm. this is intimidating do it Mm. um and a lot of the things that really held me back personally and professionally um kind of have just dissolved and i was just like wow this really took up so much space in my life for so many years and i don't think people realize how attached you get to your story or your fears or your like that becomes a part of your identity um, and I didn't want to be defined by the things that I was scared of anymore. I'm glad that my younger self did life the way she did. Yeah. But if there was any advice I would give, it was to, yeah, your fears are not as scary on the other side. 